This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the perfect all-in-one platform to grow your business and create a unique online presence. Spider mites are my enemy. I'm sorry, Theo, you have to go back inside. I'm sorry. Hello, you guys. My name is Benji, and this video is going to be all about pest care and pest management with indoor plants. The most common houseplant pests that we get are spider mites, aphids, scale, mealybugs, and thrips. I've dealt with all of these pests before. I've also tried a lot of products throughout my plant journey and I've wasted a lot of money on things that haven't worked for me. So hopefully this video will give you guys some guidance and save you some money. First, I just wanted to quickly talk about what hasn't worked for me and what I've tried. When I first started, I would try things that I could DIY easily. So hydrogen peroxide, um, cinnamon, uh, especially for fungus gnats, those things just didn't work for me at all. I also purchased predatory insects, specifically predatory mites to eat my spider mites. I also tried Captain Jack's dead bug brew. I know that works for a lot of people, but it hasn't worked for me. I think it's because when I was using the product, I wasn't applying it correctly. I don't think I was drenching the plants enough because the spray bottle like was difficult to use after a while. Over the years, I've realized that there are two products that work very well for me um, that address all of the potential houseplants that could infest my plants. The first one is Bonine Systemic Insecticide and these come in little granules that you just pour on top of your soil or you can mix into your soil when you repot a plant. And this product works on every houseplant pest except for spider mites. Whenever my friends ask me like, hey, I have this gnat problem, what do I do? This product kind of completely eliminates them. Because this doesn't get rid of spider mites, I also used this product. This is Azamax, and it has a high concentration of Azamactin. This ingredient is present in neem oil, but this product has a higher concentration of it than neem oil does. Something that's been a huge game changer when applying pesticides is the use of a pressurized spray bottle. So I'm sure you guys have seen me use this a bunch of times. It works by just pumping it like this on the top and then you press the button or the trigger that's on it and it lets out a continuous spray. Quick demonstration. like, And it's a lot easier to use than a spray bottle where you're like doing this a bunch of times. Um, it's easier on your hands and it also just applies the pesticide better. The way that the systemic insecticide works is that the plant will actually absorb the pesticide through its roots and then it'll be present inside of the plant tissue and in the foliage and in the stems. So when a pest eats the plant, it also consumes the pesticide, which then kills it. I'm not exactly sure how it kills it, but it does. I wouldn't recommend using this outdoors because the pesticide will be present in the flowers of the plants outdoors and you don't want to harm pollinators that are native to your area. So yeah, I'd recommend not using this outdoors. The reason why this product works so well for fungus gnats is because it stays in the soil for around eight weeks. If you did a hydrogen peroxide rinse, it would maybe kill the eggs and the larvae that are in the soil, but there are still adult fungus gnats flying around or living in other pots of soil or even just like living outside because fungus gnats, at least in California, are native here and they just live outside. So eventually you're just gonna get more fungus gnats inside and your issue will never be resolved. That is why a systemic insecticide works extremely well uh, for fungus gnats. And what I also like about this is that it's very easy to apply. Like you can just sprinkle it on top of your soil and then water it and you're good to go. For fungus gnats and for other pests, this will take a little while to work because the plant needs some time to actually uptake the pesticide within its tissue and then in turn have the pests feed on the plant and then have the pesticide go inside of them. Don't expect this to work immediately, but uh, give it like two weeks or so to start working. This next product, Azamax, is the only thing that has ever worked for me with spider mites. Spider mites are my enemy, honestly. They're the only pests that really give me trouble. 
Uh, they're just so small and they're really good at hiding and they're really good at spreading, but I finally have pretty much eradicated them. They still pop up here and there, but it's not nearly as bad as before. The way this product works is it's an antifeedant and an insect growth inhibitor. So it doesn't kill on contact. I think a lot of people expect pesticides to immediately kill a bug on contact, but this one does not work that way. There's this cool video that I saw. Um, maybe I'll put some clips here if it's not too graphic, but there's an example where they treated one plant and didn't treat another plant. And there was a group of caterpillars on the plants and the pests that were treated with Azimax ended up not feeding on the leaf and they also didn't grow, but the untreated plant ended up being completely eaten. The treated caterpillars were just like tiny little shrivels, um, like little raisins. It's kind of sad, but yeah, that's how it works. Like I said, a big reason why I like this is that it's not oily and it doesn't smell bad. Like I know a lot of people think neem oil smells bad. To me, this kind of smells like rice water uh, and some methods to control pests that aren't using pesticides or products is one, uh, something that I feel like everyone knows, but just inspect your plants before you bring them inside of your home and around your other plants, because it's a lot easier to treat one plant than your entire collection. I also think it's good to try not to have your plants like all touching each other. Um, and if they are touching each other, try to like separate your plants into little groups. I like to call them islands. So there's like islands of plants separated from each other. Like they can still be grouped and still be touching, but they're their own little friend group on an island. That way, even if one of your plants gets pests, it's just designated to that one area. So you can just treat all of the plants in the area and um, you don't really have to worry too much about it spreading to the rest of your plants. I am going to do a demonstration on my avocado plant. This avocado currently has mealybugs and it's had mealybugs for like two or three, maybe even four weeks. And I have not treated it yet because I saved it to use as a demonstration. So the things I do for you guys. So an important part of pest care and like the process of it is to first be able to identify that your plant has pests. So you need to know where to search for them. Different pests will like to hide in different parts of the plant, but generally they will almost always hide in like nooks and crannies. This is the leaf, I'm sure you guys know. And then what connects the leaf to the stem of the plant right here is called a petiole. And this is the stem. You'll often find pests underneath the leaves, like right here and in between the venations, and then also where the petiole meets the stem. You'll rarely find a pest just like sitting right on top of your leaves. Uh, it does happen sometimes, but generally they'll try and hide. Here are the mealybugs. As you can see, they're hiding right there between the petiole and the stem. Uh, just to give you guys an idea of where you would find these pests. The first part in treating a plant for pests is to physically remove as many as you can see. So with mealybugs, I know that a lot of people like to put isopropyl alcohol on a q-tip and just like wipe them off, but I don't have a q-tip or isopropyl alcohol, so I'm just gonna use a uh, moist towel. This is pretty much what I do for all pests. Like it doesn't really matter what it is. I'll just like wipe the leaves down. Surprisingly, there's not that many pests on the newest growth points. Pests typically like newest leaves that are softer and easier to feed off of. So uh, yeah, it's always good to check the top first. The good thing about mealybugs is that they wipe off fairly easily. So Chris isn't um, helping me film today because he's sick and uh, so I'm filming this video by myself, but I've just become so used to having someone help me film and it's so useful because I can ask him to help me get close-ups or move the camera but now I have to like stop what I'm doing move the camera and then do all of that by myself so yes thank you Chris for just like helping make filming and everything so much easier and also more fun too like I just like having someone else with me while I record because um, it feels like I'm talking to someone instead of just talking in front of a camera so even though this plant has mealybugs, you can apply this to any other houseplant pest. 
And I think we are good with uh, the physical removal now. I'm going to use the bonite to stomach insecticide. And so I like to do my pesticide stuff outside because I want to be sure that Theo doesn't get into anything or I don't drop stuff just because he is so small. Also, I wear gloves and I wear a mask whenever I handle pesticides. I don't know if it's really necessary, but I would rather be safe than sorry. After you're finished handling the pesticides, make sure to wash your hands um, and also don't touch your eyes. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this case set that I got. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. The person even delivered them to me and it's super cool. It looks like it's built in. Chris is going to be able to put his books out here and I'll put some plants and lamps. It just makes it feel very homey. Now I have a new background to film my videos. I wanted to take the time to thank the sponsor of this week's video, which is Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for my personal website, benjiplant.com, for over six months. What I really like about Squarespace is that I'm able to link all of my social media accounts directly to my website, making it easy for people to find me and connect and grow my online presence. I'm currently taking advantage of Squarespace's blogging features to create a Meet the Plants page. So it's going to be a page highlighting each plant in my collection along with characteristics and care descriptions for each one. I'm also planning to use Squarespace to post my online store. Whether you sell digital or physical products, Squarespace has all the tools you need to start selling. Squarespace has easy to use drag and drop features and that's really good for me because I took one beginning coding course in college and I dropped out halfway through the semester. So yeah, <laughs> head to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash benjiplant for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, now let's go out to the balcony. I opened up the balcony door and now Theo's sleeping on this little pillow. Um, but I'm gonna have to put him inside because I don't want him out here when I'm doing pesticide stuff. I'm sorry Theo, you have to go back inside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so the first thing that I do is I use the Bonite Systemic Insecticide and I've never actually looked at how much they recommend to apply i just kind of eyeball it and do a thin layer on the top of the soil and that's what's worked for me but if you want to be more precise then you can take a look at the label just open it up and then i sprinkle it in just like this and then i'll spread it out on the top of the soil okay So now that we have applied the bonite to stomach and we watered our plant, um, also you want to completely drench the soil and try and get the systemic to get into the soil and have the water help it like get inside the soil so the plant can uptake it. Okay, that's what I was trying to say. We are going to use the Azimax. Like I said, I really recommend a pressurized spray bottle. It just makes the process of applying pesticides so much easier. I think it's a lot more effective too because you can really drench the soil. This is a 0.4 gallon spray bottle and the recommended application rates for foliar spray with this is one to two ounces per gallon. Um, so I just do a half ounce uh, for the 0.4 gallons. What's pretty cool about this product is it has like a measuring thing inside of it so you just squeeze it like this and then I go to the half ounce part and it's a little bit over but that's okay. And then I undo my spray bottle. I already filled this with water and then I add in the Azimax. Then I close the spray bottle and I'm gonna give it a pretty good shake. Okay. So I'm gonna really pump it. So you don't want to spray a pesticide foliar spray on your plants when the sun's out. So you want to do it either in 
the early morning or in the evening. It makes the leaves a lot more photosensitive and your plants can get really sun damaged if you do it in the middle of the day. Don't do what I'm doing, but I'm doing it for demonstration purposes. And then I'll just bring it inside right after. So we really wanna spray this plant down very well. Um, try and get the undersides, the nooks, the crannies, the crevices. Take your time doing this so you actually get everything on the plant because there's nothing worse than having the pests come back even after you treat them. I take each individual leaf and I spray the top. Um, and then after I'm finished spraying all of the top leaves, I'll spray the undersides of them. Also, something that I didn't mention earlier is that um, Azimax is organic certified. And I know that people who grow marijuana use this on their plants as well for spider mites, so I trust those people. <laughs> and then I also spray the soil because I believe pests also lay their eggs in the soil, so just to make sure, I spray here as well. Okay, so I finished applying the Azimax, and now uh, let's go back inside. In a week, you're going to want to reapply the Azimax. And I can't stress this enough, you have to reapply in the next week or else it's probably not gonna work. If you really wanna be sure that you killed the pest, I would even recommend applying it a third time a week after your second application. This avocado tree wasn't next to any other plants, so I am not gonna spray any other ones, but if it was next to other plants, I would recommend that you spray the plants next to it as well. For the Bonite Systemic Insecticide, you don't have to do another application for about two months, I believe. The reason why I use Bonide and Azimax uh, is to kind of use two methods of killing pests because um, I just really wanna make sure that I get them and using the systemic as well as the foliar spray just really makes me feel secure that I have treated my plants well. That's pretty much it for how I treat my plants for pests. It's the same process for pretty much any plant and any pest. Just know that pests are totally natural and it's just part of owning house plants, really part of owning any living thing. Like even in aquariums, you're gonna get pests. Embrace the journey, not the destination. I feel like that's definitely how it is with plants. Thank you guys for watching and hopefully this helped and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.